This is the Aliyah for Tuesday, Parshat Shmos, 5,776. Vayihi bayomim Vayar ish mitri ma ke ish ivri me echov. When Moshe Rabbeinu, who grew up in the house of the Pharaoh, my Rebbe used to say this is one of the proofs that God has a sense of humor. He remembers, he re- showed us a picture. It's available online. You can look it up in the Time magazine. Old archives of photographs, and there was a photograph of John F. Kennedy in his office at the cabinet table with all of the cabinet people sitting on either side of the table and him sitting at the head of the table and a photograph was taken from underneath the table where his son John Jr. was running under back and forth under the table so you see the legs of all the ministers and the child standing full height under the table and his father's legs all the way at the top of the table. So my Rebbe used to say, that's the picture he sees when he imagines Moshe Rabbeinu growing up in Paro's house and he imagines Paro and his ministers sitting and talking and, oh, what are we going to do about the Jewish problem and about Mo, about the Savior that's being born and, oh, my goodness, and, and all the time running up and down around his feet is uh, the exact person that he's looking for. So God has a sense of humor. Just wait. Just wait for it, as they say. Vayifen, so the translation of this Pasuk is the Moshe Rabbeinu goes out and he sees his brothers, the Jewish people, in their work, in their suffering, that the Egyptians are needlessly, the Jews were working for them, it would have been fine, but needlessly squashing them, needlessly doing things that were just to be cruel, just to cause them troubles. And he saw an Egyptian man hitting an Egyptian, hitting a Jewish man. The Talmud tells us that this Egyptian was also sleeping with this Jewish man's wife. He would keep him out in the field and would beat him and would make sure that he didn't come home. And then he would sneak into the man's house and pretend to be the man and sleep with the man's wife. When Moses saw this and saw what was going on, he looked. Well, that's the next passage. Vayifen kovacho vayar kien ish vayach es hamitri vayitzmenehu bachol. So Moshe Benu looks, he looks this way, he looks that way. Physically, we're told he, look, he does that. And also with a prophetic eye. He looks forward all the way into the person's future, all of his future generations, what's going to come out of him. And he looks into his past to see if he did anything that was worthy. And he sees this, nothing, nothing, nothing. So he kills him and he buries him in the sand. We're told also by a Midrashic source that the method that he uses to kill him is he utters a name of God. He says the Shem HaMaforash the name of God that we do not speak out loud, only the high priest would speak it in the Holy of Holies once a year on Yom Kippur, and Moses uses that name in order to kill this Egyptian, and he buries him, he hides him in the sand. So Moshe Benin goes out next day and he sees these two Jews who are Nitzim. Interesting, the letters are the same as Natzim, but that's an English word and this is a Hebrew word. Nitzim over here means that they were fighting with each other. And Moses says to the Russia, to the evildoer, why are you hitting your friend? Who implying also your friend is an evildoer because we are not allowed to raise a hand one against each other for no reason. So he asks him, why are you hitting him? 
ויאמר מי סמך לאיש שר ושופט ושופט עלינו הלהרגני אתה אומר כאשר הרגת אס המצרי וירא משה ויאמר אכן נודע הדבר So these two fighting Jews who are beating each other, who are both evil, because there's no real reason for them to be hitting each other, say to Moses, uh, who are you? Who made you our judge and prosecutor? What are you going to do? Say something and kill us like you did that Egyptian yesterday? So Moshe says, Achei noidah adavar. Now I understand. Now I understand, number one, that this thing is going to become known, that Paro is going to find out, the authorities are going to find out. And number two, on a deeper level, I understand. He had a question. Why? Why are the Jews suffering so badly? What have they done? Why? Why are the Jews? And now he sees that they are fighting with each other. He sees that they are willing to turn him in who did only good for the Jews. Doesn't matter. They're willing to turn him into the authorities. They're willing to speak Lashon Hara, gossip, slander each other. Now he understands why they are suffering in such deep slavery. Vayishma paro es hadavar hazeh Vayivakesh laharog es Moshe, vayivrach Moshe mipnei paro, vayeshev ve'eret midyon, vayeshev al haba'er. And paro does find out, he hears, and he wants to kill Moshe because of it. And Moshe Benu is forced to run. We are told he actually runs from the executioner's block where they attempted to behead him, but he got away. A miracle occurred, and he was able to leave. So where does he go? He goes to Midian, and he stays in Midian, and he goes to the well, the community well. Ulechohen Midian sheva banos v'tavona v'tid lena v'temalena es harahatim lahashkos tzon avihen to the priest, the high priest of Midian. He had seven daughters, and they were his shepherds. They would go and take care of the flocks, and they would come and take from the well and fill up the troughs and water their father's sheep. Vayavo haroim vayigarashum vayakam moshe vayoshion vayashk es tzonam so the other shepherds come and they chase them away. They don't want them there. We're told that it's because Yisro, their father, was not very popular. He was not being PC. He was challenging all the accepted gods. He went out and did a research project. And he was in the midst of deciding on the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <sighs> Oops, skip the Pasuk, back. So he sees they came earlier than usual. They usually have a lot of trouble with the shepherds and have to wait till the very end. This day, they had help from someone and they came early. So he says, why'd you come so quick? Vatomarna ish mitri he tsilonu miyad haroim vegam dalo dalalonu bayash geshatson. So they told their father that an Egyptian man saved us from the other shepherds who usually bother us, and he also helped us to feed to water the sheep. It's pointed out over here that they call Moses an ish mitri. So on one level, he was probably looked like an Egyptian, walked like an Egyptian maybe, and he came from Egypt. But why does the Torah call him an Ish Mitzri? So there's an interesting explanation that 
the Egyptian that we're talking about is not Moses, but rather the Egyptian that Moses killed. The extent of our obligation to be grateful to something, to someone, for anything that we've received, if we pay attention and close, deep attention, there's always a cause behind the cause, behind the cause, behind the cause. So Moses is there helping them fight against the shepherds and to help them with the water. Why? Well, because he killed an Egyptian and he had to run away from Paro. That Egyptian and everything that he did that led Moses up to killing him, even though that Egyptian did it for his own reasons, obviously, still there's an aspect of a debt of gratitude that can be expressed and be thankful that here this guy caused that Moses was there and he saved us, period. So the extent of our gratitude is as deep as our awareness, basically. And Yisra says to his daughters, what do you do? What do you do? You left him there alone? Bring him home. Maybe he'll marry one of you. The yocha lechem means to eat bread. I mean, bring him home and we'll feed him. And bring him home and maybe he'll marry one of you seven unmarried daughters. Vayoel Moshe Lasheves es ha'ish vayitein es tzipora bito Moshe. So Moses comes, and he stays, and he decides to stick it out with Yisro, and Yisro gives his daughter Tzipora to Moshe for a wife. Vateled bein vayikra eshimo gershom kioma ar ger hoyisi be'eretz nochriya. And they have a child, and they name that child Gershom because he says, I was a stranger in a strange land. It's his title. It's a Torah's title. Someone stole it for another book. Vayahim harabim hoheim vayamas melech mitzrayim vayahanachu vayahanachu b'nei Yisrael min ha'avayda vayizaku Vatal Shabbosom Elho Elohim Min Ha'avayda. And after many days, years that Moses was there, the king of Egypt dies. Either he dies simply or he contracts leprosy and he begins to slaughter Jews, Jewish children, in order to bathe in their blood to cure his leprosy. And it makes the slavery go to another level entirely and the Jews begin to scream they begin to cry we begin to petition God why you promised Ay, sounds familiar huh Vayishma Elohim es na'akasam, vayizkar Elohim es briso es Avraham es Yitzchak ve es Yaakov. And God hears our cries. First we have to cry. And God remembers the covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Vayar Elohim es b'nei Yisrael vayeda Elohim. And God sees, he looks at us. And he knows, he knows on every level. He knows exactly what we're going through. He knows exactly what we need. Let's stick it out.